Yo, we are building an electric Ape, which is basically a three-wheeled Vespa. Uh, it's gonna be super sweet, 72 volts, dual motors. Come check it out. Here is a quick overview of the 1963 Piaggio Ape. Piaggio is the same company that makes Vespas, so in all essence, this is a three-wheeled Vespa. Now let's take it apart. Probably took about an hour. Uh, our next step in this process is we're going to pull the differential. We're going to pull the, these little swing arms back here and these chain cases and then the wheels as well. And then we'll, we'll prop it up and we'll start welding on our new supports for our electric motors. <laughs> are spread everywhere it gets ultimately pretty messy uh, but we've got the wheels chain cases differential it's all out uh, the old brake lines I just cut even the emergency brake line which is the cable I cut as well we're not gonna be using any of those we're gonna be running new brake lines uh, disc brakes uh, it's gonna be a completely different setup so uh, we're not gonna use any of that so our next step really is to grind some of this paint down here so we can weld in our supports to put in our new swing arms. So let's get to that. Okay, now that we have the Ape disassembled, we need to talk through our fabrication and design some swing arms to hold the electric motors. That way this thing can move. Um, so something that I've made before is this swing arm, which has vertical dropouts, if you can see that right there, uh, and bolts right into a Vespa. This is for a Vespa conversion. Okay, uh, everything is just designed on my computer. It has tabs, so when I order it, it all clicks together, and I can just weld it all up together. I'll show you some okay looking welds. So, so our plan for this is to take that exact same design, but we're gonna tweak it ever so slightly like this. You can see I've added some extra supports here and here and beefed it up a little bit for the extra added weight of an Ape. Now, looking back here, right in here, you can see these two notches. That is going to be for a suspension mounting point. So uh, let's go mark that up on the computer. We'll use some CAD, design it, send it off to get the metal cut, and then we'll weld it all together. Let's go. By the way, I can weld, but since this is for a customer that's up in San Francisco, they're gonna be driving up and down the steep hills, carrying a lot of weight as a mobile uh, bar, I'm going to pay a certified welder to do this. Luckily, I have a friend who's a welder, so I'm gonna tack everything together, and then I will pay him to come and then do the full welds, just so we know that there's uh, structurally sound welds with full penetration of the metal.
pretty good stopping point for today. Everything is welded and tacked into place. And you can see that we've got active suspension. So independent rear suspension. Whoa. Pretty cool. Things still need to be tightened down. Well, still need to be completed. But at least for today, right now, we're at a good rolling stopping point. Um, we're still waiting on parts. So you can see I have different hub motors on here. It's not going to be like that. So let's just focus on this because this is the same motor that we're going to be using. We have a computer design swing arm that is beefed up on this side uh, with double quarter inch plates and boxed all the way through, which then mounts to the stock suspension. So, I mean, this is just sitting in here. It still needs to be bolted in. But for right now, you can see that's actually a uh, suspension mount that's also a, um, a sway bar, which is pretty cool. These Oppes just naturally came with them. The bar goes all the way across to the other one. Um, really helps when you're turning these things sharply. Let's see, what else? Uh, we have a tube that we welded all the way through the frame um, that will be trimmed flush here. We gotta cut this off. Same thing with this rod and these welds will be finished. For right now, you can see it's just kind of, everything's just tacked into place uh, with a couple welds. So it's strong, but we wanna finish all of our welds um, like this all the way through. So once this is bolted up, there's like a rubber adapter that I still have to pull off of these things. You can see it right. Uh, where is it? Right there. Anyways, that's gonna bolt in correctly. Yeah, next kind of steps is getting all of this cleared out so we can fit our motor controllers in here and our batteries. Uh, in the past, I've put battery trays back here on the op base, but this is going up to San Francisco. And since it's gonna be in San Francisco, I think it would be best if the batteries were underneath the actual seat where it's protected from the rain because San Francisco is a rainy city. Okay, now that all the fabrication is done, let's talk through the wiring before we actually go through and plug everything together, because this is actually a pretty dangerous part if not done correctly. So, we are going to be using two identical controllers, and we're actually going to be using two batteries, but they're gonna be running in series, so we can almost think of it like just a big battery. We want these both to be hooked up to the battery, so what we're going to be doing is running from the positive post of the battery terminal to the positive hookup of the first controller. Then we're gonna be taking the negative post of the battery and hooking it up to the negative post of the second controller. Now, it's imperative that these are identical controllers. They have to be identical. In order to run these in series, we are going to be having the positives connected and the negatives connected. This wiring method will ensure that uh, equal amounts of current pass through both controllers at the same time. We don't want more current passing through one controller than the other because that would turn a wheel faster, cause it to accelerate faster on one side, and since it's a three-wheeled design, we'd veer off to the left or to the right. Running off of these two jumpers between the two controllers are a positive and negative wire. We are going to use to run a 12-volt lighting system. Here's our layout. First controller's on the bottom. Second controller is going to be up on top of it on an aluminum shelf, which will act as a heat sink. Here's our battery. The positive is going to go to the positive of this controller. Our negative is going to go to the negative of that controller. And then we will be running these in series, so we will connect the positive and negative. That way our current is going to go through both of the controllers. So that's our wiring. Let's get to it. Okay. 
really quick, let's do a wiring overview. We are inside the op bay right now. I have removed the seat. So let's check this out. We've got the identical controllers and we've got our battery. Each of these controllers is powering its own separate motor and we are running these in series. We're gonna program these identically and then this should be ready to go. Switch will be up here, but for right now, it's just right here.